Pregnancy is a time of hope and anticipation. But for some, anxiety about potential genetic disorders can interfere. Fortunately, prenatal evaluation helps to identify complications such as birth defects or chromosomal abnormalities during a pregnancy. Early identification can give parents the opportunity to prepare for the possible decisions and challenges ahead. In this podcast, we will review some of the methods used to make early detection possible. Chromosomes are found in all cells in the body. They provide the genetic instructions for cell function and structure. If they're not formed correctly, or if they're missing or extra chromosomes, the result can be a physical or functional abnormality in the baby. Down syndrome is the most common, well-known chromosomal abnormality among live-born children. Down syndrome is the result of an extra copy of chromosome number 21. These children have distinguishing physical characteristics, as well as significant learning disabilities and an increased risk of birth defects. Most chromosomal abnormalities occur by chance, which is heightened by factors such as increasing maternal age or a prior affected child. It's difficult for a routine ultrasound exam to detect abnormalities like Down syndrome. Additional tests have therefore been developed for a more accurate diagnosis in pregnancy so the expectant family can plan ahead. Unfortunately, the screening tests aren't able to provide a quick yes or no answer. Instead, they calculate an individual's chance of a chromosomal abnormality, usually starting with a baseline risk, such as the mother's age. Ultrasounds and maternal blood tests are combined to generate a numerical risk, such as one chance in 100, or 1%. Screening tests are often considered negative when the result is less than one in 270, or positive when it's greater than one in 270. The screening tests are very low risk, non-invasive, usually low cost, and easy to perform, therefore accessible to a broad population. The most current screening tests that are widely used include a first trimester screen, also known as a nuchal translucency screen, or a second trimester screen, also called the quad screen or the maternal serum screen. The first trimester screen is performed between 11 and 14 weeks gestational age. It involves an ultrasound measurement of part of the baby's neck. This finding, combined with the results of the mother's blood sample, assesses the likelihood of Down syndrome. It effectively detects 82 to 87% of cases. The first trimester screen has several advantages. It has high rates of detection for Down syndrome. It can be used very early in a pregnancy, and it's the best screening option in twin pregnancies. Its disadvantages include the need for early initiation of prenatal care. The test itself requires special provider training and evaluation, which limits its availability. And unfortunately, it does not evaluate the risk of spina bifida. Follow-up screening is often offered. In the second trimester screen, maternal blood is tested between 15 to 20 weeks gestational age. Certain characteristics of the blood are measured to calculate the chance of chromosomal abnormality. This blood test can be done in any physician's office and sent to central labs, which makes it widely available. The detection rate for Down syndrome, while slightly lower than first trimester screening, remains good at 81%. The disadvantage is that it must be done in the second trimester, somewhat later in pregnancy. If a routine ultrasound is normal, many patients and providers elect not to proceed with additional screening tests. Though this decision is ultimately an individual's personal choice, it's important to recognize the limitations. Gestational age at the time of the ultrasound, sonographer experience, and patient characteristics limit the ability to identify the signs of Down syndrome in an ultrasound. The resulting detection rates range from 50 to 75%, which is lower than other screening options. In summary, less than 1% of pregnancies are affected by chromosomal abnormalities. You can discuss your individual risk factors with your physician and learn about these screening options that can aid in the detection of chromosomal abnormalities. In addition, Maternal fetal medicine physicians and genetic counselors are great resources to help assess risk and determine an individual's best screening options. UNC offers the full range of these services at the UNC Women's Hospital in Chapel Hill 
and at Rex Hospital in Raleigh. For more information, you can visit the UNC Maternal Fetal Medicine website at mombaby.org or the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists at ACOG.org. Or call us at 919-966-2131.